song I'm going to forego that to say this lead me guide me daily Jesus lead me guide me good morning church how's everybody good morning morning and we welcome everybody too that may be watching us on YouTube we want to start our service with a word of prayer this morning Let's bow our heads in prayer and humble ourselves before the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for our country and that we live in a country where we can come out to a church and to worship you in spirit and in truth and in freedom that, that we'll be safe in doing that, dear God. We thank you for that. We have so many gifts that we've been given as American citizens and as your children, of course, dear God. So we thank you for everyone that made it out today in this Florida cold weather. And we thank you for every family that's represented, dear God. We pray a special prayer uh, for healing for those that are ill and couldn't be with us today, dear God, that you, your healing touch will come upon them, dear God, and that they would be healed and can come and worship with us again soon, dear God. And now we just open our hearts and minds to what you would have us know today, dear God. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us that we may be changed people from the people that we were when we entered this church today, dear God. Dear Lord, we welcome your Holy Spirit now, dear God. Please forgive us for everything we've said or done or Thank things you. that we've left undone this week, dear God so that we may be right vessels, dear God, for you. Now just fill us with your Holy Spirit and, and let us give an ear to what the Spirit would have us learn today, dear God. Hallelujah. And that, that we might help this hurting world, dear God, in some gesture, even something that we say or do, will show the world that we're on fire for you, dear God, and help us lead others to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as Savior, dear God. We pray these things in Jesus' holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we just put our hands together for Jesus Christ this morning? He is so worthy to be praised. We're going to ask if you'll stand this morning as we worship and praise God. We have all the words on the screen, and so we want to ask if you'll join in and sing these songs with us. It's great to see each and every one of you. Did everybody have a good Christmas? And New Year and everything so far, excited about what God has in store for us, and uh, we're all on the, hopefully on the uh, Daniel fast, and we're just believing God for, that he will give us clarity and vision for this new year, for what he's going to do in us and through us with this church and with the community, and guess what, he's going to use you to do it, he's going to use you, Miss Robin, he's going to use you, Gio, and, and Pastor Jerry, and all of you all, Brother Eric, to, uh, to, to just make a difference in this time and day for his honor and for his glory. This song just talks about giving God praise. We have some exciting things in store for you today. Uh, Brother Glenn Green is going to be doing the, the communion for us. And so we just want to ask that you will join in with us as we worship God this morning. Can you turn up the track just a little bit? That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll praise in the valley. Praise on the mountain. 
I'll praise when I'm sure and praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when outnumbered and praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the waters my enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, sing it, church, sing it. Sing praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'll praise when I feel it. I'll praise when I don't. I'll praise because I know you're still in control. My praise is my weapon, and it's more than a sound. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. As long, sing, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Sing it in your sing. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, say, I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive. So how can I keep it inside? Come on, sing, say, praise the Lord, oh my soul. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I'll praise cause you're sovereign, praise cause you reign, praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I'll praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, church, sing it. Praise the Lord, sing it. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, sing. I won't be quiet. Say, I won't be quiet. My God is alive, so how can I keep it? Come on, say that again. Say, I won't be quiet. I won't be quiet. My God is alive, so how can I keep it? In Sing it again. I won't be quiet. Sing it. I won't be quiet. My God is alive, so how can I keep it inside? Sing praise. Sing it. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, church. Give God a praise. Because He is worthy. He is faithful. Give Him a praise. I won't be quiet. He's been too good. Come on, sing. Let everything. Let that everything. everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let praise, everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One more time. Let everything. Let, let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. One more time. Sing it. Let everything. Let everything. That has breath. That has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Give God a shout of praise this morning. He is so worthy. That's a fun song. Hope you can go listen to it and get familiar with it. We'll do it again some other time. I thought this song today would be appropriate as it's first Sunday, communion Sunday, and we remember, as God says, do this in remembrance of me. But it talks about God taking us out of the grave, and until we met him, we were in a grave. But we're so glad that we're not in that grave anymore because he is Lord, and he has risen from the grave. He got up so we too can get up from whatever it is that we're going through this morning. Amen. Sing out. 
I was buried beneath my shame And who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you Come on, everybody, sing it together. Sing it, sing it. Sing, I was breathing, but not alive. Anybody have failure this morning? All, All my failures, failures I tried to hide. It was my tomb. It, it was, was my tomb. tomb. Till I met you. And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Did he call your name? You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness into your glorious day. Now your mercy has saved my soul. And now your freedom is all I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, sing it. You, you called, called my name, name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave. darkness into your glorious day I needed rescue my sin was heavy my chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. Cause when you call my name. Out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Church, put your hands together and give him a praise this morning if he's worthy. Hallelujah. One more time, give God a hand of praise. Brother Gio is going to come this morning and give us our scripture reading, followed by Mr. Glenn, who will be doing the sacraments this morning. You may have your seats. Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. May all of you have a blessed year ahead. The scripture reading is from Acts 11, chapter 1 through 18. Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea 
heard that the gentiles had also received the word of god and when the peter came up to the jerusalem those of the circumcision contended with him saying you went into the uncircumcised men and ate with them but peter explained it to them in order from the beginning saying i was in the city of jopa praying and in a trance i saw a vision an object descending like a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners and it came to me when i observed intently i and considered i saw four footed animals of the earth wild beasts creeping things and birds of the air and i heard a voice saying to me rise peter kill and eat but i said not so lord for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth my mouth but my but the voice answered me again from the heaven what god has cleansed you cleansed you must not call common now this was done three times and all were drawn up again into heaven at that very moment three men stood before the house where i was having been sent to me from caesarea then the spirit told me to go with them doubting nothing moreover these six brethren accompanied me and we entered the man's house and he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house who said to him send men to jopa and call for simon whose surname is peter who will tell you the words by which you and all your household will be saved and and as i began to speak the holy spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning then i remembered the word of the lord how he said john indeed baptized with water but you shall be baptized with the holy spirit if therefore god gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the lord jesus christ who was i that i could withstand god the reading from the gospel thank you good morning Good morning i did not take this lightly it was almost a war within me as to how to approach this and the different things and issues of the day and so here it is i wrote it on a receipt the debt has been paid yet the receipts and a receipt as it is is given to us for accountability the long receipt communion is about accountability and this morning i'd like us to look at it from a broader perspective and that is communion as a body and this is as a church we represent together his hands feet mind and body not only individually may we address the issues personally and corporately that are affecting the church today and i mean this church in particular as and i'm sorry my hand shakes sometimes so please be patient may this communion unite us in one accord i'm going to turn the paper over again i apologize for the shaking the old testament law required an offering for sanctification Today we've been given an offering for sanctification. We're asked only to cleanse our heart before joining with the Lord in this offering that he has provided for us. If 
I could have the ushers, please. If I could have the ushers, please, to serve. Gio and yeah. So this time we'll serve the congregation, then I will pray, and then we will take communion together. Prayer. Prayer. Lord, I pray for a pure heart, a clear conscience, and sober mind for all that we all that will receive the blessing. Amen. I take the bread that represents the body of Christ. Bible says they went out and found him. Amen. The worship team is going to do one more song just before um, Pastor Jerry comes and he'll do the offering for us. You can come up, Pastor Jerry. We'll do, we'll do the song after he gets done. Welcome, Pastor Jerry, everyone. Beard is looking good. <laughs> yeah, the kids make me grow it out, so Nara and I have a competition. So he's been dressed up today. You see that? He looks Still good. Shorts. It's looking to good. Get him up here on, in the camera so everybody can see. <laughs> <laughs> we could have ushers come forward. You know, as we start this new year, um, I wanted to read Matthew six. Uh, do not worry. And you know, I know somebody who plays the steel drums. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You know, as we go into the new year, we, we have a lot of worries. 23 wasn't all that great, uh, especially for, you know, our house. Uh, Sammy actually walked in today without the boot on, so it's been a long process. And so, <laughs> so new year, new time, but why do we worry? Um, you read the news, you read, you know, we got multiple wars going on. It's, um, in case anybody's wondering, the Bible talks about it, read Matthew 24. There's wars and rumors of war. Before he comes, it must happen. But I just wanted to read a little bit, uh, Matthew 6, uh, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body and what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more value than they? 
Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So as we enter this new year, in time of giving, I know some people are afraid to give because how are they going to pay the bills? You don't have to worry about that. How am I going to get gas? How am I going to get rent? You know, Brother Man this morning coming in said he, uh, he was uh, cleaning up a, a book bag or something, found a gift card from what, your birthday last year? You know, God provides for us, even though, you know, um, I know the story that Eric and Sharon always tell about, they just needed uh, laundry detergent, you know, to feed all, or to do all the laundry for the kids. And Eric was out on a job and uh, the lady said, uh, hey, I've got this extra laundry detergent. Do you want it? <laughs> I mean, it's something as simple as laundry detergent, God will take care of us. So Lord, we just come to you now. We just thank you so much for providing for us, especially for sending your son as an ultimate sacrifice for us so that we can ask for forgiveness of sins, Lord. We just ask that you bless this offering, Lord. We ask that you bless the giver and the offering for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Hallelujah. As you give this morning, we'll ask that you'll stay uh, stand, standing up if you are able to sing this song with us. And the lyrics are up on the screen. And just like Pastor Jerry said, we ought to trust in God at all times, in the good times and the bad times. No matter what we're going through in life, sickness, health, poverty, whatever struggles we're going through, we ought to trust God at all times. And this simple song that... Uh, comes from the word of God just encourages us to keep our mind focused on Jesus Christ. Sing it. It's a simple song. And I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Cause I trust in God, my Savior, the one. Whatever you got going on this morning, I just want to encourage you to lay it down at his feet. 
Lay those burdens down at his feet because he cares for you. Here we go, sing. I saw. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I saw the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Because I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will Come on, sing it. I saw the Lord sing it. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I saw the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. Come on, just put your hands up right now and give God the praise and the honor and the glory. Just thank Him for who He is because He's a good God. He's a good Father no matter what is going on in your life. He deserves praises. He deserves honor. He deserves glory. The Word of God says that He inhabits the praises of His people. I wish that I had two or three witnesses that would help me give God some praise this morning. You didn't have to make it in 2023. Some people died. Some people didn't make it to see a new year, but God thought it fit that you should be here. We ought to give Him some praise this morning. My Savior who will never fail he will never fail cause I trust in God my Savior the one who will never fail he will never fail on church give God a big great hand of appreciation because he's worthy he will never fail he will never leave you he will never depart from you this morning hallelujah praise the Lord church I'm excited to see each and every one of you, and I'm so excited about what God is, he has in store for this new year, for this church, and for this community. Hopefully, you are participating with us in the Daniel Fast, if you are able to, but um, God has just given and shown us so much clarity and given us vision, amen, for what he is getting ready to do 
and I am just getting excited because I am looking forward with great anticipation, not only for what he's going to do, but for his return, because we know that the time is near, amen? And I want to share with us this morning for a few moments on the power of prayer and fasting, and I uh, just want to touch on this since we are in the book of Daniel, going through the Daniel fast, and um, just want to bring some things to our remembrance, some reminders and some things that will help us get through this fast and understand the purpose of why we fast, not only now for these 21 days, but throughout the year. I mean, there's 365 days in the year, 52 weeks. As we fast, ask God for vision and clarity for your life, your family, your church, your community, what God wants you to do, how he wants to use you. It's not about us, but it's about the will of God for our life and for what he has us here to do. I want to say a special thank you to Pastor Jerry for bringing a dynamic word last week. And we were in Tennessee. It was cold, about 28 degrees, but we were watching on the Internet, and we truly enjoyed that powerful word on unity. And um, I know Glenn Green, he filled in and did the music for two weeks, and we thank God for him. I think he told me he was going to go spend time with his family um, today. And we also had Pastor Ann Jones the week before that who uh, did our sermon. And thanks to each and every one of you that continued to make sure the church was functioning, um, whether you were here in person or you were praying. Uh, I want to say special thanks to Mr. Shumain for taking care of our media and Pastor Jerry back there. Uh, our Daniel fast and prayer it ends on the 24th of this month. And if you get off track, that's okay. Try to get back on. It's all right. And, um, but I believe that God will definitely open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on you, your family, as you make this sacrifice for him. Many times in the Bible, we see where the scripture tells us about the prophets and the people of God. When they fasted, the leaders, the church, they fasted and saw breakthrough. And I believe with all my heart that that some things only get broken through by prayer and fasting and the Spirit of God that is able to break the yoke. Amen. And um, so this ends on the 24th. And um, feel free to continue fasting even after the 21 days. Um, you can do uh, twice a week. It was customary in, in, in the Bible days where they fasted twice a week. Even the scribes and Pharisees fasted twice a week. And um, the disciples fasted. It just brings so much clarity. It brings you in unity with Almighty God. Make sure that you're in tune with the Holy Spirit. I don't want to live this life and I'm not in, in tune with God and just on my own agenda. It's like a, a train that's, that's on the wrong track. I don't want to be going through life on the wrong track. I want to make sure I'm doing all that God has called me to do. And um, is the bus here this morning? Okay, good. It wasn't there when we pulled in, but I want to try to end service a little early. As you know, we had somebody donate a bus to our church right at the ending of the last, uh, last year in December. And what we want to do is I'm going to ask some of our leaders. We're going to anoint the youth leaders that teach on Wednesdays. And if we can um, get Miss Anna involved on that uh, at the end of the service. And uh, we're going to go out and anoint the bus, lay hands on the bus, because we're picking up kids the bus driver and, and those that are helping out. And some of these kids come from homes where they need Jesus. And, and we don't know when we pick up these kids, the battles that they're facing. We're going to ask God that as they step onto the bus, that they will step into the presence of Almighty God and that chains will break, chains of darkness and bondage and addiction will break, that these kids will get to know who Jesus is through a personal relationship with him as they get fed on Wednesdays spiritually and physically, and as they go back out to be a lighthouse in the community, a lighthouse in their home, a lighthouse in the school. So is it all right if you participate with us this morning right at the end of service as we go out and we thank God for that. And um, I want to say a special thanks to Eastland Baptist because it's not a brand new bus, so it's got some, some things that need work on. It needs a paint. It needs a few other things, but Eastland Baptist uh, said they'll take care of the brakes for us this month. It needs brakes. And next month, they're going to take care of brand new tires on the bus. So can we just give them a hand of appreciation? I love being able to partner with other churches, and we feel each other's needs and burdens and step in and help out where we can. Uh, 
Sunday evening, the 28th, we want to continue our once a month Sunday evening service. Um, what I try to do is have other pastors in our area or on, in our denomination that are spirit-led, filled with the Holy Ghost, and knowledgeable on the Word that will come and bring a word, hopefully come with their praise team. But um, I've talked to our regional bishop, Clayton Watson, who's over Florida. He's willing to come. I think it's March. I got to check the date or February. But this uh, month, on the 28th, we have Pastor Mark Todd at 6 p.m. coming from New Life down near UCF. And he has confirmed that he'll be here. Hopefully his son, uh, Pastor Zach, will come and lead worship. If not, we'll get a praise team in here. But I love the evening services. If you haven't been to one, it's just a different atmosphere, and it just allows us to be free in the presence of God, partner with other churches. I think last time we did it, we had about four churches in here, Redemption. We had the two Baptist churches. We had International Harvest. We had another church from Titusville, and it's awesome to see the body of Christ come together in unity and worship God. We're all here for one assignment, one agenda, and it's to lift up the name of God, to make disciples, and we look forward to seeing his face. I'm excited about this year because this is the year that we're going to build on a firm foundation, which is Christ the solid rock. We've got stuff in place that we're planning, and we just want to make sure that you are a part of this uh, move of Almighty God. But please keep us in your prayer as we believe God to just break the chains of, of whatever thing, uh, bondages or whatever struggles, circumstances that are holding you back personally in your life and the life of the church so we can continue to grow. Amen? The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. Everyone that steps foot in these doors, whether you're watching online, uh, that you will feel welcome. You'll feel accepted. You'll feel the love of Christ. And I uh, want to say a special thank you for those that are giving faithfully to keep... Uh, Keep these doors open. I'm still working on setting up a business meeting for church members that want to come and give you a little update on what's going on and what we're planning to do. I talked to a financial advisor last night, and he's putting together a proposal for us where he can present uh, a strategy for us to make sure that we are taking care of all the finances of the church and we know uh, what's going in, what's coming out, and the budgeting. But once we get that... In place, we'll have a meeting, and we'll give you some updates, so keep, keep the church in prayer, but there are people that are not even coming to the church, but are faithfully sending their tithes and offering in the mail, online, and we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, because well, we cannot keep these doors open without money, amen? It takes money to, to fund the ministry of God. So this morning, I'll be brief, and just before we go out and, 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 and anoint that bus, thank you to all our leaders for, for, for what you do every week, Brother Glenn cutting the grass and doing his Monday night ministry. Uh, Rachel is pretty busy right now, but she said she'll let us know when she's able to pick back up the young adult Bible study. And uh, we have Connect Night on Wednesdays where these kids are just having a blast. And uh, there's always something for you to do to get connected and get plugged in. Amen? I want to talk about the power of fasting. Father Lord, I come before you. And I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be before your people. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to lift up your name. I thank you for the opportunity where we could come together in freedom and unity and talk about your word, preach the gospel, and live according to what your word says. Lord, we give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. We thank you for unity in this church. We thank you for love in this church. We thank you, Lord, for people that are giving, Lord, providing instruments and, and a bus. Lord, you'll, you're going to send more people that will give Lord, to fund the ministry so we can do what you have called us to do. Just help us to be good stewards of it. Help us to be humble, Lord, and help us to stay close to you in your presence so you can continue to lead, guide, and direct us, God. Open up doors, Father God, that no man can shut, Lord, and we pray that you will shut doors that no man can open. Lord, things that seem impossible with man is possible with God. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do and for what you have already started doing in this new year. Lord, we pray for those that are sick, that you will heal them, that you'll protect them. You'll cover them, Lord. We pray for Stephen that you'll touch his mind right now. Then put him under the subjection of the Holy Spirit right now, God. Put him in a right state of mind in the name of Jesus. God, as we prepare the parsonage for young people, as the church is growing with young people, we can have a place to put them and wash the clothes and give them food and shelter and clothing in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and honor and glory in your name we pray. Amen. 
Amen, amen. Uh, for those of you who may be wondering about the second harvest, um, I did talk to the, to the leaders down in Orlando about second harvest, and they were just waiting for me to get back in town, but they want to meet with us, and we're going to resume second harvest. Second harvest has not been shut down. It was temporarily shut down, but we're going to open it back up because there are people in this community that need to be fed. And uh, once I shared that with them, they said, we're going to wait for you to come back and we'll resume our second harvest. So please spread the word for those that are looking forward to these meals that uh, we are just uh, setting up a, a meeting to get the second harvest back up and running. Amen. The book of Joel chapter 1 and verse 14 says, consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Somebody say, cry out to the Lord. Fasting is a deliberate act of turning away from food and or other personal appetites for spiritual purposes, especially so that we can focus our attention on God. And somebody said, why do we start this at the beginning of the year? Is it a New Year's resolution? Is it a, is it a diet? You can, it's not a diet. I mean, there are physical benefits to being on this fast, but we are doing this to focus our attention on God. If you read the book of Daniel, it tells you that they did have physical benefits, but we are doing it for the spiritual benefits, and then the physical benefits follow. And it should be our same way with our walk with God. We, we chase after God for spiritual things, and then material things follow. But sometimes we get it backwards. What is fasting? Fasting is a deliberate act of turning away. Somebody say, turn away. Put down the Oreos. I told my wife, I said, just hide it from me. I don't want to see it because if I know where it is, I'm going to get in there and I'm going to eat those Oreos. And turn away from the food and other personal appetites. It doesn't just have to be food. For spiritual purposes, we're doing this for 21 days, especially so that we can focus our attention on God. Fasting does not only have to be abstaining from food. We are on a Daniel fast. And um, don't get caught up on the details of it. Everybody's fast may look a little different, but it's simply uh, refraining from meat, dairy, bread, eggs, alcohol, um, anything that is processed foods. If you have any health concerns, be sure to check with your doctor and make sure that, that, that you're okay. Um, and like I said, if you get off track, get back up. They said no flour, so uh, I believe you're, you can have nuts and everything like that, but you're not supposed to have white rice, but you can have whole wheat rice. And, but like I said, this is between you and the Lord. Don't get caught up on all the details. But in addition to the food fast, fasting does not only have to be abstaining from food. Uh, there, are, there are things we can abstain from complaining. How many times as Christians do we complain? We can, we can abstain from gossip for these 21 days as a sacrifice to God. Social media, negativity, and any other distractions or entertainment. I believe the book of Hebrews chapter 11 talks about uh, laying aside heavy weights. There are things in our lives that are not necessarily sins, but they are things that are holding us down, keeping us back from what God wants to do and how he wants to bless you. And so during this time, it's just a time, I like to do it at the beginning of the year. Most churches do it at the beginning of the year because it sets us up for the rest of the year for what God is going to do and to ask that God will give us vision for this church for the new year and how we can use these next 365 days effectively for his purpose. Amen? Any kind of entertainment. Now, I'm not saying you can't do anything fun and all that, but make sure that you're doing some kind of a sacrifice for God. Fasting from whatever is a hindrance in your life. That's going to look different than the person next to you. What is a hindrance in your life? You're fasting that thing. It's a spiritual sacrifice for God for spiritual benefit. Amen? What is the purpose of fasting? Fasting disciplines the body, not the boy, the body. That was a typo on my part. Fasting disciplines the body or the little boy inside of you. <laughs> and it quiets the soul so that we can hear God more clearly. Amen? Daniel fasted. The disciples fasted. When they fasted, there were times where Esther, she fasted. 
There were times in the Bible where they were going to war. And they, instead of eating and getting full, they fasted. And they asked God for not only physical, uh, to conquer physically, but spiritually as well. They fasted before they went to war. If there's a struggle in your life, in your marriage, in your family, on your job, and you're wanting God to intervene, fasting gets his attention. Fasting gives you the faith to believe God for the things that cannot be seen. It's a spiritual warfare that we live in. It's a spiritual world that we, that we are in. And there are things that are happening that you cannot see, but it's a spiritual realm. It's like if my wife and I are here and somebody put a curtain in front of us. She's still there, but I can't see her. doesn't mean that she's not there. And so are there, there are angels amongst us. The Bible says in, in Matthew, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst. His angels are here. The Bible also says that I saw Lucifer fall, but he also fell with a third of the angels. So there are demons that are here. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers to the pulling down of strongholds. There are times where you may wake up in the middle of the, of the morning, in the middle of the night, and you feel like there is a presence in your room, whether it's a good presence or a bad presence. There is something going on, some kind of spiritual activity I encourage you to get on your knees and pray to God that the right spirit will be in your household. Because there is a devil and his job is to steal, kill, and to destroy your life. Fasting disciplines the body and quiets the soul so that we can hear God more clearly. Somebody say clarity. Scripture shows us that prayer and fasting are linked together. What is the purpose of fasting? Fasting aligns us. With his will. Fasting aligns us with his word. And fasting aligns us with his purpose. When should we fast? We should fast when the Holy Spirit leads us. There are times when it's a Tuesday afternoon or a Tuesday morning. And I sense the Holy Spirit telling me, stay away from food today. There are times where I felt led to fast not knowing there was a battle up the road that I hadn't seen, but God knows what's up ahead. And fasting prepared me for that battle. Had I not been fasting, I would not have the courage and the faith to believe God for victory in that battle. It's important to be obedient to the voice of Almighty God. When the Spirit leads us, it's important to fast. It's important to fast when we sense that there is a need for it. I don't know about you, but our church needs a fast right about now. I don't know about you, but our nation needs a fast right about now. I don't know about you, but my household needs a fast right about now. My neighborhood, my community needs a fast. When you sense it, you go on a fast. When should we fast? We should fast when the church body is calling us to fast, which is what, which is what we're doing today is we're calling for a fast. We ought to fast when the church body is calling for it. We ought to fast when national leaders calls us for a time of fasting. If you look through scriptures, there were leaders that called for a time of fasting in the Old Testament. Even the animals were fasting. There were times where I had to put my dog on a fast, not because of spiritually, but there was no money to buy dog food. I said, we're going to fast this week. What are the blessings of fasting? I want you to read through these six verses with me coming from the book of Isaiah chapter 58. It says, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him. I was studying in, 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 uh, while I was in Tennessee listening to the Bible app. And I was reading the, through the Gospels. And Jesus was telling them, don't invite somebody to your house for dinner who you know is able to repay you. And who is able to have the funds to bless you in return. But he said instead, invite the poor and the wicked and the sick. Not the wicked, the, the sick and the lame. Invite them into your home. 
and provide a meal to them. Go out in the highways and byways and compel them that my house may be filled. He says, then you will get true blessings. There is where your true treasure lies. Because when you feed the naked, you feed me. When you feed the hungry, you feed me. When you clothe the naked, he said, when have I done these things unto you? Whatever you have done to the least of these, you have done unto me. Be careful when we, when we see strangers that we entertain them because there could be angels among us. Verse 8 of our text says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. Somebody said the Lord will. He will answer. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Yes and amen. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness. If you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall, your light shall dawn in the darkness. And your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you. The Holy Spirit is here to guide us. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought. How many know that a drought is coming? Book of Revelation tells us that a drought is coming. We're living in the last days. And strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. So what are the blessings of fasting? Out of that text that we just read in Isaiah 58, 6 to 12, those six verses, there are about 14 things that, I, that, that, that are talked about in this book. And I want to mention a few of those to us. Number one, fasting and the blessings of fasting loosens the chains of injustice. Number two, it sets the oppressed free. Anybody want freedom today? It breaks the yokes of bondage. It promotes sharing. It provides for the needy. And it brings healing. Number seven, it springs forth righteousness it brings god's glory for protection when we travel for protection when we fly i, I was looking on the news when i when i uh, was woken up early this, this this week my wife surprised me for my birthday last week and took me for a little uh hotel getaway and 3 30 in the morning i was wide awake and i couldn't go back to sleep so i, I decided to just go and pray and after I spent time praying, it was 4.44 in the morning, and I was watching Good Morning America, and I looked at the Japanese plane that crashed and, and, the, and, and those people that were injured. And I looked at all the things that are happening. There was another plane where the, the wheels didn't come down, and the pilot had to make an emergency landing. And they told those passengers, brace for impact. I was at my wife's grandmother's church up in Tennessee and they mentioned this 13 year old girl that broke our heart she woke up Christmas morning just fine they don't know what happened to her all of a sudden her body started swelling the doctors couldn't figure out what's going on they had to amputate her legs 13 years old we need God's protection over our family over our community. It gives us protection from God. For God's protection. Answers our call for help. Promotes righteous living and benevolence. Number 11. The Lord will guide you and satisfy your needs. He said he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Not our wants. Our needs, 
I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed bed and break. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be with you until the very end. Number 12, strengthens your body. Fasting is like a detox. Cleanses out all the things that don't need to be there. Arteries and all those there. Look it up online. There's so many physical benefits as well to fasting. It's a, it's a detox. Fasting causes you to be fruitful and productive. It initiates reconciliation with those relationships that have been broken. I remember when I, when I would fast, sometimes three days or seven days, five days, whatever. You know when you, when, you, when you eat a big meal and you get sluggish and tired and you just want to lay, lay down somewhere. When you're fasting, you're productive because you don't have that drowsy, tired feeling. You wake up with energy and you're productive. And I'm thinking, man, God, I've, I've gotten so much done today. God gives you clarity in your mind and your spirit focuses your attention on what he wants to use you to do we spend so much time eating waiting in line at the restaurant and we got to get dessert and we got to go lay down and, and and let the food wear off i mean how many how much time do we spend doing that it's good to eat we we need food but the bible says that that there is something more important than bread man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of almighty god there are different types of fasts. There are liquid fasts where you're just doing broth or, or, or veggies, juices, apple juice. There are so many different things that you could do. There's a complete to and total fast. Now, the body can only go three days without water. So there are times where you can do a three-day fast with absolutely nothing. Now, you can't go past three days without water. But you can go on a three-day total fast. Or you can go on a three-day fast with just water. A seven-day fast. A 14, a 21-day fast with just water. You won't die. Jesus went on a 40-day fast. Moses went on a 40-day fast. There are partial fasts. There's the Daniel fast. And there's so many other different types of fasts. As I was doing some research, I saw that there is even an Esther fast. If you have medical concerns, check with your doctor. And as I get ready to close, and, and, and we're going to go out there and pray uh, over our bus and our leaders. Fasting gives you faith to believe God for things that seem impossible. These things are not impossible. They seem impossible. Fasting gives you faith to believe God for it. The book of Mark chapter 9 and verse 23 says, Now, this man had a demon-possessed boy, son. He took this demon-possessed son to the disciples of Jesus. They were not able to cast the demon out. So then he went to Jesus and he said, I brought my demon-possessed boy to your disciples. They could not cast the demon out. So Jesus said to this man in verse 23 of Mark chapter 9, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Somebody say all things. All things are possible to him that believes. Verse 24 says, Immediately the father of the child cried out, Sometimes I have to say this prayer myself. What did he say with tears in his eyes? He said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. God, I, I, I believe you can work it out, but I have doubts. Help my unbelief. I know you can save my marriage, but help my unbelief. My son and my daughter that's lost on drugs, alcohol, addiction, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because he said, if you believe, all things are possible. I need a good job, but help my unbelief. There's people that pray, Pastor, pray for me. I have no work. I've seen it happen over the years. I lay hands on them. Father, bless them with a job. They get promoted. They get 
graduated, they get that job, you don't see them in church anymore. Now they're too busy for God. We all one day will have to give an account for the time we spent on this earth. And the talents God gave us, did we utilize those talents? What did he say to the wicked servant that took the talent and hid it? He said, go into utter darkness. You wicked servant. God has given you a talent. It's not about whether you have the time or not. It's about where your priorities lie. Because your church needs you. And you'll have to give an account for the talent that God has blessed you with. People get so busy working and they don't even have time to come. It's not that we don't have the time. We don't make the time because it's not a priority for us. God stands on that day of judgment and says, Give an account. How will you answer? This servant said with tears in his eyes, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Verse 25, when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked them and, and, and he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter no more. Verse 26, the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus, in verse 27, took him by the hand and lifted him, him, him up. As we sang this morning, Jesus lifted, up, lifted us up out of that grave that we were in. Is that right, Dr. Man? He took that heart of stone and gave you a heart of flesh. He said, take those sins and I'll cast it into the sea of forgetfulness. Don't let your enemies remind you of the way you used to live and how it used to be 10 years ago. God has cast the sins his way as far as the east is from the west. And he put a new spirit, his spirit in you. You walk in the newness of life that you now stand with God. The enemy will come and try to remind you of your past and tell you, you don't qualify for this position. You don't qualify to be doing what, what, what you think you're doing. Who do you think you are? Be careful to the voices that you listen to. The devil will tell you, you don't belong here. This is not where you ought to be. Go do something else. Just leave and quit. Give up. Word of God says, my sheep hear my voice and they obey me. My sheep hear my voice and they obey me. We were in Tennessee. There was a, my mom said, can I video call the kids? She misses them. I took my phone and I called my mom. And I didn't tell Haven who it was. I said, somebody wants to talk to you. He said, who is it? I said, I don't know. They said they want to talk to Haven. I gave him that phone. My mom said one word. She said, hello? Haven said, with a smile on his face, it's Yaya. Do you know the voice of Almighty God when he speaks to you? There are times we have doubts. Why? Because we don't even know which voice to listen to. And the enemy will use your friends, Miss Robin. He'll use the people that are closest to you that are supposed to be supporting you to tell you like Job's wife, curse God and die. The people you thought would be there for you, nowhere to be found. You've been there for them all this time. Now you need them. Where are they at? Nowhere to be found. The people like Peter who said, I'll always be here for you. Whatever you need, I'll be right there. Jesus said, really? Before the cock crowed, when the cock, before the cock, three times you would have denied me. Judas right there, knowing what he had done, dipped his hand, the bread with Jesus. As he betrayed him. Be careful the voices you're listening to. It could even come from a friend or a loved one. Sometimes the voices we think that are against us are the ones that are for us. People that will love you enough to tell you the truth. Get your life together because it's appointed unto man wants to die. And after that the judgment. I want you to live right because I want you to make it to heaven. 
It's more about more than singing a song. It's more about coming to church looking like you, you, that you fit the criteria. God looks at what's in the heart. I love you enough to tell you, get your act together. And the people that want to say, come on, Miss Robin, you can drink a little bit. You can smoke a little bit. You can go to the club. I accept you. My wife surprised me, and, 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 and we were trying to figure out things to do in Chattanooga. She said, there's an open poetry. We went, and we sat there, and we looked at these people who were doing poetry. There were, man, there were demons all over that place. These people are talking about, I'm a boy, and I grew up as a boy. I want to be a woman. I wish my family would accept me. And there's a room of people that are saying, we accept you for who you are. I wanted to get up there and read the book of Proverbs to them. But to see a room full of people that are supporting the agenda of the devil. That broke my heart. Somebody hasn't been honest with them. This life gives you temporary pleasures of sin. But they won't last all days. Jesus told the woman at the well in John 4, the water that I have to give you will never thirst again. Because I want to give you everlasting life. I want to see his face one day. And I want to see you in heaven. And if we're going to go through with just a handful of us, we'll go to heaven. Because this is going to be a holy church. We are not going to condone sin. We're going to preach Jesus Christ. We're going to preach truth. And we're going to preach love. We'll never turn anybody from walking through these doors. But when you come in, you ought to be changed. You ought to be transformed. He said, be of, in the world, but not of the world. Renewing your mind, transforming your mind. I love you enough to tell you that. And if you get upset at me and leave, God bless you. Because my, your blood is not on my hands. We got loved ones that are living in sin. We don't have the guts to tell them, get your life together. Because I love you. If you really love, God says he chastens, who he, he chastens who he loves. He rebukes who he loves. Don't touch that sun. It's going to burn you. Don't go in the traffic. You're going to get hit. We want to be their friends. We want to make them feel accepted. We're too afraid of what they're going to think of. I don't care if you don't like me. I love you anyways. Why? Because God has put his spirit in me. So you may talk bad about me. I'm going to love on you. I texted a pastor this week and I said to him, I said, I'm praying for you. He said, no need to. I didn't text him back, but I'm going to pray for him anyways. Because the God is in me. It's greater than the devil that's telling you lies. You're not going to stop me from praying for you. You're not going to stop me from loving on you. He said to this boy, this man of the boy, he said, as he took him by the hand and he lifted him up and he arose, when he came into his house, he said, the disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast this devil out? He said to them, this kind can not come out but by prayer and fasting. Some struggles in our life can only change. Somebody say change. I don't know about you, but I want to change this year. I want something different in our church. I want something different in my life personally. I want something different. I want to change. Some things can only change through the sacrifice of prayer and fasting. If you believe that this morning, stand to your feet as we get ready to close. And instead of doing an altar call today, I'm going to get this anointing oil and and I'm going to ask Dr. Kathy, Dr. Mann, if you will help us. We want to anoint our leaders that help with the youth department on a Wednesday. Shemaine, Dr. Mann, uh, um, Brother Glenn, Pastor Jerry, Miss Sammy, Eric, Sharon, uh, sh and, and uh, Miss Anna. And uh, we want to anoint them, Camille. And we're going to go out there and we're going to anoint the bus, lay hands on the bus, and pray God's protection. And pray that this presence of God 
will dwell there as they get on that bus. They'll be praising God that the lives of those kids are going to be changed, that they'll step on the bus and they'll feel love and acceptance through Jesus Christ, which is the truth of the living God that we serve. Amen. Father, Lord, I pray for those that are watching online that you'll bless them, God, that you'll keep them, that you'll cover them with your precious blood. Lord, and we ask these things in your name. We thank you for doing it. Let the words of our heart and, those, and, and our meditation be acceptable in your sight. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Please join us outside as we get ready to lay hands on our bus.